Ladies and gentlemen, Nerd. nerds and neckbeards. Nerds and neckbeards. Shh. You got to be a little bit quiet. Be a little quiet. Rosie, over here in the corner. Yeah. We're yeah. going to be here in the corner. Just sitting here. Yeah. Okay. It's getting late. And so we need to move our charcuterie into the corner yep. of the quill mm -hmm. and tankard where it's yep. a little we're bit darker here. and a little quieter. And, but we're... Uh, we're expecting some things to unfold tonight. Yeah, we don't want to let the secret yeah. out too much. So, and we're, we're just, we have to talk in quiet tones mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. this corner. Well, Which until we get into the corner. Yes. And then we can let's talk get, at a normal volume. Yeah, let's get, yeah. okay, here we yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, right. so now so, that we're settled in our little, uh, like, nook. So the first secret we have yeah. to tell everyone is uh, don't tell Rosie, but yeah. we haven't paid our tab yet. <laughs> Hopefully she can find us to deliver us more ale and cider yes. and charcuteries. Although I have to complain, yeah. Rosie. Yeah, it's definitely not my fault that these Triscuits are super stale. Oh, no. Yeah. They came, those are Rosie's Those Triscuits. are obviously Rosie. I oh. would never bring stale Triscuits over to my friend's house to I, record a podcast. I, never. I, I wouldn't I, do that. That's I, rude. That's a rude thing to do. I wonder if it's mm -hmm. just because the Quill and Tankard is so moist here on the Honey Yes, water, it's know? because of the high humidity. The high humidity. Things yeah. uh, mm. get a little bit more like stale faster, oh, obviously. Okay. Obviously. You know, obviously. so yes. this is like yes. maybe... You know, obviously it's their fault. Obviously not my it's fault. Rosie's fault. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Because of this, we won't be paying our taxes. <laughs> right? I feel like in, in Westeros, especially <laughs> in an establishment that's 600 years old, if we try to sneak out of our tab, they will kill us. Eat and dash and run. <laughs> Meat and run. The, what is it? Uh, cider and see ya? C cider and see ya? Okay, okay. I can cider and see ya. I can, I can do that. Although, before we walked over to this corner table, oh. which is quiet and private so we can talk, because yeah. our fear is that we are, we're talking about some important and... Um, I think that potentially the, shattering news. Yeah, yeah, that the citadel doesn't want anyone to know, and we're so close to the citadel, and they have oh, eyes oh. and ears everywhere, that we have to kind of like duck down in the corner. I I know you're not. I I would complain to Rosie about those stale crackers. Not so stale. <laughs> oh my god. Mm hmm. Someone did not open these during the Super Bowl, probably, and they're still. <laughs> So, uh, oh. Dave, I just wanted to recap yes, please. our Citadel episode. This whoa, is whoa, part whoa. two. We, we can't, we're not up to that part yet. Oh, okay. We first have to tell everyone who we are. Obviously, it's Westeros, Westeros whenever, whenever Lee, in whenever the corner. Lee, whenever Lee, in the corner of the <laughs> Quill and Tanker. Tanker. In By the, the fireplace. Rosie, don't forget about us. This is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is a special edition of Westeros, whenever Lee, in the corner. In the corner. Corner, corner. Don't get murdered by an alchemist. Uh, tonight, no matter tonight. who gives you a gold coin, do not bite it, Dave. Ooh, yes. Don't bite down on any gold coins you see, okay? Of course, because my first reaction is to eat metal. Yeah. You know? I never understood that. You don't I know mean, what the I, taste I really, of gold is, but... I really never understood, yeah. like... I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to bite this, yeah. maybe shatter a tooth. I guess in reality, I guess it's because real gold is like kind of soft, yep. so you could probably move it with your tooth. And there has to be some sort of like a thickness gauge. I don't know why it had to be the mouth. That's true. One of our history major listeners is going to know the answer to this. Right. Or one of our listeners that's like, oh, I know what Google is. I can type this in but and it, figure it, it out. It definitely was more of a weight thing, right? Like, I think so. Everyone, like, yep. the coin had to weigh a because certain Because if you, amount. yeah, if you shaved off parts of the gold or, I don't know, man, yeah. I'm not a ancient coin counterfeiter. Okay. You but should, I should, I, I mean, should get into that. You are an artist, which <laughs> means true. you are, like, halfway to a yeah. forgery. Yeah, I was Forgers. reading a Forgers, thing about... For, for, Someone who forges. Yeah, nice. And, and, not, and not like hammers and stuff. Not a smith. All right? Susie, down. Although we also those have are not those. meats for you. Mm. I know you're, you're mad at me because your doctor put you on a diet, but... Oh, um, she doesn't seem like a very fat, dire cat. Oh, obviously there's cats at the Quill and Tankard, yeah. which is where we are. That's right. We've got a crackling fire. Rosie yeah. is bustling around. Mm -hmm. Um, we have We've to be got on this the very lookout. Comfy new chairs. Yep. Yes, we do. It's like a gamer chair it's here like a in the corner. It looks almost like a Formula One racing chair. Yeah, that's so. And, and that, the uh, and the big Bobby Baratheon beard has now turned you into <laughs> Tormund Giant's Bane. There am, is still uh, no shaving that has I am happened. I now Dave Willig the Wildling. <laughs> just saying. It's so yep. perfect. Yep. Yeah, the best part about this is that uh, I think our it's vehicle's curly running a little now. late. So. <laughs> It may get even bigger. Oh, oh no, you're gonna be like super bushy beard. Yeah, I'm gonna it's be curling, like, man, and it's light. You know, it's, like it's there's blonde streaks in there. Last time it looked very dark, very black, 
And now it's almost ginger. It's blonde in the yeah. mustachio. In the mustachio? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to look in the mirror because I was just commenting to my friend who was also growing out his beard that yeah. his, like, goatee region is very, mm-hmm. like, blonde while the rest of it is, like, very dark <laughs> and looks like, he looks like an interesting Mufasa. <laughs> so. I, like, I like it when beard hair comes in different than the rest yeah. of your face yeah. or not your face, your head. Uh, I worked with a guy who had like a one um, gray streak just on like the right corner of uh, his beard. And that's so, so yeah, baller. I mean, it was a very cool look. I kind of wish that I had like just like two gray lines. Yeah. Just because uh, like. You could do like, I don't I know, c- I lemon do, juice or something. Try to lighten it. You just know? like blonde yeah. it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> go, go all We'll tairashi. have to ask. Um, the the red priestess if they yes. have any techniques for uh yeah. dying beards or uh um, yeah, or t- yeah the you just need some yeah. you could go full pink or like bright lime green there yeah. you know blue but just like, like one like, like two streaks like a racing stripe okay you know? i like it yeah. yeah if you bleach them out to almost white you would match your new chair yeah. in the corner of <laughs> the coolant tanker here <laughs> uh, okay dave yes. so um, we are here in yeah. this physical location because we were just talking. You mean the corner? The corner mm. because we were just talking in the main area of the Quill and Tankard about Old Town and about this, the origin of the Citadel uh, and the Great Empire of the Dawn. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting into some really like current events kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we've got the culmination of a lot of different threads and what we're going to try to whisper about in the corner here is what that means for the story for winds of winter coming up and also what it means for um the for the history i think we're going to have to go in our way back machine a little bit and talk because the maesters there's things they don't want us to know but I brought, look at, I brought my book and all my papers. I'm oh. going to unroll my scroll here. Very okay. Nice. And, and we're going to go over some of the stuff that I discovered uh, about the Citadel that they don't want us to know. Oh, I'm super excited. Oh, it's going to be so great. But. Yes. Before we do that. Of course. We need to tell everyone what we're drinking tonight. Mm. We are obviously drinking just regular old ale. That's right. From Rosie. Just and a random assortment of ale. Not, beer, spirits, wine. Not at all no the wine, leftover but, beer that people left at my house yeah. during the Super Bowl of this year. I thought, I really thought we were going to get through this stage <laughs> last time, but we are still emptying, um, not, excuse me. <laughs> hypothetically, if we were an Inquil and Tanker, yeah. we would hypothetically yeah. be emptying Tana's fridge. I think they probably had like a big Quidditch match. And so, Quidditch. They, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely a Quidditch match. I and see. so, there's like a lot of leftover ale. I see. Yeah, from the latest, like big. There's Quidditch no match. sport. Like the Quidditch there's, World Cup. Yeah, aside from like jousting, there's no sports in Song of Ice and Fire. That, you know, that's an interesting topic. I they think we're going to have to do I think we're gonna have to do a podcast on that. Yeah. Well, what? The, we just did. There's well, no sports. End well, of podcast. Well, I, I don't know. I think you could do some research and find out some more information. <laughs> well, I mean, like archery and jousting and it's well, all, it's all tourneys. It's all about yeah. fighting. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. But so, Dave, yes. what can you, what do you remember about the Citadel? What did we talk about the last time? Uh, How old is the Citadel? It's really old. Mm-hmm. I want to say uh, four hundred years old. See, we don't know, but no, don't it's know. definitely at least four hundred. We know it was built by some guy. What was uh, his name? His I don't remember his name. His brother <laughs> built it for him. Some guy and his um, brother built it. Yes, yeah, well, his brother <laughs> built it for him in in memory of him because he mm-hmm. died and he loved to like read and shit. Um, <laughs> so. Um, Just off the top of your head, if you can remember... You know, the origin of the Citadel like, are almost from. as mysterious as those of the High Tower itself. Mm. Most actually credit its founding to the second son of Uther, a.k.a. Oh. Uh, Uther Pendragon. That's right, Uther Pendragon. Uh, the High Tower. Prince Paramore the Twisted, a sickly boy born with a withered arm and six twisted backs. Yep. Uh, <laughs> not I don't know six, you, I don't know not you, six I don't, twisted backs. <laughs> I don't know how you have six twisted backs. Look... I am hypothetically <laughs> reading off a piece of paper that Tana slipped me <laughs> while reading, but but um, he's a monster. <laughs> yes, yes, How could these six, maesters argue in front of this yes, kid? Six, yes, six. look, Tana. <laughs> yes. Look at that scroll. Does that not say six twisted uh, backs? Second, yeah, it that looks bad. Yeah, that, uh-huh. yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, well, in a twisted back, he was, so it was for Paramore the Twisted. Yeah. He was bedridden for much of his short life, but he had an insatiable curiosity about the world beyond his window. So he turned to wise men, teachers, priests, sealers, and singers, along with a certain number of wizards, alchemists, and sorcerers. It is said that the prince had no greater pleasure in life than listening to these scholars argue with one another. And when Paramore died, his brother... King Urgon, who would be our King Arthur, wow. right? Because Uther was Arthur's dad. Right. Uh, King Urgon bequeathed a large tract of land beside the honey wine to Paramore's pets that they might establish themselves and continue learning and questing after truth. And so they did. That's the most we get. And it's from the world book, page 216 in the American edition. You know, you know what I think yeah. um, is pretty cool? At least something that just popped into my mind. I mm -hmm. think... Um, uh, Paramore the Twisted would love our podcast. I think so, because yeah. we do a lot of arguing amongst ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And, and but I, I, I mean, think he likes the, scholarly people that talk. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> with the exception of the fact that we don't know what the fuck we're talking I, about. Any, it would be difficult time, to but... argue. I'm not going to lie. It would be difficult to argue in front of a man that had six twisted backs because <laughs> I would just be like, I'm arguing in front of a monster. How do I not look That's at his... Don't so look at his backs. Don't look at his backs. Don't Tana, look at all six look, of his backs. Tana, you I of know. all people know, should know <laughs> that... People who yeah. are different just want to be treated I, the same. Okay? I'm just saying that from a personal standpoint, it would be horrific for me to see a six-backed person. Like, that would just yeah. be... What if he hard. doesn't identify as a six-backed person? Okay? <laughs> I what think a, I mean, we have to be able to get through our opening credits without doing identity politics at some point, Dave. <laughs> Never. Never. Speaking of, Alras the Sphinx. No, oh. I have no transition to that. <laughs> uh, but I do have a transition to this. So... Um, to recap, uh, we also believe yep. that the Great Empire of the Dawn, yes. which we have talked extensively about in the last podcast and also the one before it, um, that we, is fact. I think, yeah, I think we've made a pretty compelling case that they existed, yeah. that Agreed. all of the major cities, which are port cities, yep. much like Old Town is a port city, much like Lannis Port is a port city, much like Volantis is a port city, Tyrosh Mir, they all have these things in common. They're all along a sea route. Um, the black oily stone. Yeah, the black smooth stone, which is the same smooth stone you find on the Dragon Road of Valyria, the five the forts, forts yep. Volantis's giant 200-foot walls or whatever they are, and then on Battle Island. And then you also have the sea stone chair, the black oily stone. Right. And we have these rumors, these ancient myths. What was that? Your computer just farted. Oh, yep, it's your, it's my phone. Your phone farted. For some reason... What? I, I can't believe you get service Sucks. inside the old, the tankered in. Yeah, no, well, Quill and Tankard. You know, it's, uh, this is an interesting place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, good cell service here. Yeah. <laughs> even though it's very misty in the yeah. honey wine. They've got stale chips, but good yeah, cell service. Stale, Who stale chips. <laughs> the smell of the salt sea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a leaning tower of an ancient old uh, inn here. And that's 600 it. 600 years old. Yeah. Um, so the Dawn Age guys, yeah, we believe that the that the main heads of the houses, we we really think that they are really the the first yeah. people, right? They're, yeah, they're the ones who really started this world, with the exception of the first man, um, not the first man, the uh, the children of the forest. Yep. Right? So, so it was the Dawnish and the children of the forest. Yep, they're really the two main uh, living factions, like the major civilizations. Yes. Exactly. And then we had the first men come over. So uh, if you're interested, obviously, listen, you go back. You you guys can listen to our past podcast. We have to jump into this. I'm yes. just afraid Let's that the maesters in. are going to yell at us, Dave. Well, they I can't hear to, us because we're in the corner. That's true. I have to play this clip for you. Huh? Now, I want you to pay attention. On the surface, it's just about Samuel Tarley being in the, the uh, library uh, underneath the vaults underneath castle black he's reading scrolls for Jon snow and he's trying to find out information about the others right um it's the symbolism of this opening chapter i want you to pay attention to um the key word is going to be um is, is going to be gray mice gray mice yeah listen to this in specific is that like the uh question that we got wrong Exactly. Yeah. And so now, you know, it's like, here's this gray mouse. And so I've been um, 
anyway, we'll talk after, but but really listen because we've got I think there's some really cool symbolism here. All right, roll the clip. Sam was reading about the others when he saw the mouse. His eyes were red and raw. I ought not to rub them so much, he always told himself as he rubbed them. The dust made them itch and water, and the dust was everywhere down here. Little puffs of it filled the air every time a page was turned, and it rose in grey clouds whenever he shifted a stack of books to see what might be hiding on the bottom. Sam did not know how long it had been since last he slept, but scarce an inch remained of the fat tallow candle he'd lit when starting on the ragged bundle of loose pages that he'd found tied up in twine. He was beastly tired, but it was hard to stop. One more book, he had told himself, then I'll stop. One more folio, just one more, one more page, then I'll go up and rest and get a bite to eat. But there was always another page after that one, and another after that, and another book waiting underneath the pile. I'll just take a quick peek to see what this one is about, he'd think. And before he knew, he would be halfway through it. He had not eaten since that bowl of bean and bacon soup with Pip and Grin. Well, except for the bread and cheese, but that was only a nibble, he thought. That was when he took a quick glance at the empty platter and spied the mouse, feasting on the breadcrumbs. The mouse was half as long as his pinky finger, with black eyes and soft grey fur. Sam knew he ought to kill it. Mice might prefer bread and cheese, but they ate paper too. He found plenty of mouse droppings amongst the shelves and stacks, and some of the leather covers of the books showed signs of being gnawed. It's such a little thing, though, and hungry. How could he begrudge it a few crumbs? It's eating books, though. It's eaten books, though. It's eaten books, though. So the biggest takeaway I had laid on me is that Sam likes charcuteries. <laughs> Man, everybody that's worth their salt loves charcuteries. That's true. Yep. That's true. So here's the deal, Dave. What? So what did you? What was that? What? What happened symbolically in that chapter right there? I think it's the first time we see Sam in, I want to say, A Feast for Crows. Okay. And it just kind of sets the stage for, I think, what's 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 happening here. Which is? The mice are eating knowledge. Mm. Sam has this... Uh, he, well, the, he makes this comment. They eat this, the books, too. Yeah. And they're hungry. The gray dust, right, in early in that clip. Rising uh, in the clouds. Yeah, yeah, it rises, obscures his view. Right, it makes it hard for him to read, hard for him to learn, hard for him to study. The gray dust is getting in his way of learning. And then you have this little tiny mouse, totally little helpless, cute little mouse. And Sam thinks, I should kill this. I should kill this maester. I mean, this mouse. But I can't. Look at him. He's just like, he's just a little mouse. But he also eats books. And that's what we're talking about in the corner today. The maesters have been eating the books. And I wonder if in the same way that the snowmen, which were symbolically in that chapter that we talked about, um, was it the Great Northern Conspiracy at the end? You had snowmen. Yeah. And it was like Wyman Manderley and all of the like the people that we suspect of having Jon Snow's back, the snowmen right, were right, actually right. made into physical snowmen in the yard. I think that George does this sort of thing. And so, Sam, we know at the end of the story, or at the point in the story where we are right now after dance, that Sam gets sent down to Old Town to be a maester. And this is the moment where he's, like, accumulating knowledge, but that accumulation is being obscured by this gray dust. I think it's very important that it's gray dust. So, I think that's intentional. So do you think that him being at the Citadel is mm -hmm. going to... That, that the maesters are going to try to obscure him from finding the truth and well, stuff like that? Marwin told him, if you tell the maesters what you told me, they you're going to get poison in your porridge. And uh -huh. Sam's like, well, what should I do? And he's like, tell them they're so wise. Tell them you want to serve. Tell them they're so smart and amazing and Just basically, learn. basically uh, build Forge them your up, chain and but, get the yeah. fuck out. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm. But I feel like that... 
is maybe overlooked. I, it, this is the beauty of this series is that when you read it a second and a third time, there are things that you catch that you didn't catch before. I mean, it's common for us to talk about maesters as gray rats or gray mice. Right. He sees a gray, not a brown mouse, not a country mouse, a gray mouse that is literally eating books or, you know, like that's the train of thought. I should stop this from happening. And it's getting in the way. In the rest of this chapter, there's... Um, do you think that possibly in wins that uh, Sam is going to maybe do something about it? Like he he finds out really what's going on, and then bam, he's just like, "Yeah, no, 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 now, you are not you are not the kings of knowledge. You yeah. are not the know it alls. You guys are, are are bullshitting people. You guys are calming, you know, quelling the intelligence yeah. so that you can be the powerful ones. They are hiding books." Um, and there are rare books, we talked about yep. this last time, that are behind, the, an iron. you need an iron key to go get these books that are hidden deep in the vaults of the Citadel. And my train of thought is, you know, who has access to these books? We think that Jake and Hagar, the alchemist, who's looking now, for, yeah. is looking for that. Don't tell everyone. Yeah, don't, uh, because yeah. there could be an alchemist in here right now. Or Pate the pig boy, we don't know. So just, like, don't trust anyone. Yeah. Except for Rosie. Yeah, Rosie, well, Only to bring us booze, though. Booze. She could be in no, on it. No we chips. don't know. She, she can't bring us any more chips. No chips. I mean, it's just they're too stale. They're just too stale. Yeah. God. Who, a, a pro tip, when you go to the Quill and Tankard, don't, don't get, get the chips. Don't get the chips. Don't, don't get, get the, the Triscuits with your charcuterie. That's right. Yep. Get a trencher. Get a... Yes. Excuse me, Mom. You're excused. This is a qu this is the quill and tankard after all. <laughs> so um, up away till your heart's content. So uh, in the rest of this particular Sam chapter, yeah, he talks about or he, he's gathering up scrolls and information. John has sent him down there to figure out what they know about others, what he can tell him uh, okay. about books and scrolls and things that he finds about the others. And I think that there's some really valuable and important information, but. In order for us to talk about... Why does about, there always have to be a but? There's always a but. God. There's always a but. The best things in life yeah. are butts. I think I'm more of an ass man. Yeah, me yeah. too. Okay. You're I'm an ass man? Yeah. I'm an ass man. All right, yeah. all right. I like a good butt. Yeah, who doesn't love a good butt? Take us in our way back machine. All right, guys. Here we go. Boing. <laughs> So we've come back in time. It's about 60 years or so after Aegon's conquest. Okay. And who is the king right now? But good King Jaehaerys. Okay. Okay. Good King Jaehaerys is arguably the greatest Targaryen king ever. Arguably. Arguably. Mm. Uh, he ruled for the longest. He was alive until he was like 100 years old. I mean, they called him the good king. Yep. He's known as the good king or the old king. He's also known as Jaehaerys the Conciliator because he takes over after Crazy Magor mm. and he makes a peace with the warrior sons and the poor fellows, right? So Aegon the Conqueror has died and his two shitty sons have taken over and they've just kind of fucked up the realm. So yeah. Aegon ruled for about 30 That's years. That's the black or the red dragon? Yep. Okay. So we've got Magor the Cruel yeah. was the red... He's Everything sort of ran red around him. He started a war with the Faith. Uh, and his older brother, uh, Aenys the First, sometimes known as Anus the First, <laughs> is, was kind of a wimp. Like, he just was terrible he's, at ruling. He's kind of an anus. Yeah, he was an anus. He's kind of a butthole. <laughs> so I mean. it went Aegon, Anus, <laughs> Magor the Cruel. And then the kingdoms, the Seven Kingdoms, were like, motherfucker, like, we... Married the dragon last year. It's been 30 years of this rule, and we hate it. And yeah. so we're going to rebel and go back to our old ways. But along comes old King Jaehaerys, who at this time is young King Jaehaerys, the conciliator, who is an excellent king. And his queen is good Queen Alysanne, and she rules as much as he does. Mm -hmm. And they have, like, 13 billion children, and all of their children have dragons, and they each have dragons. Stump Dave, question number one. Ooh. What were the dragon names of King Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne? <sighs> and I never remember this guy. Like, I'll try to remember it now. Silver Fox. Oh, so close. Wing. Uh, Silver Wing? Yeah, for which one? Uh, That was the Queen Alysanne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Silver Wing Jaehaerys was had... You're never going to get it. 
Vexron? Oh, you're so... Ver- Ver- Vermithor? Ver- yeah, Vermithor. Oh, yeah. Dave, you were so close. Yeah. What That's up? awesome. What up? Hey, all men must drink. All men must drink. Rosie, more ale. Rosie, another round for Dave. Another round tonight. Rights. Yeah, that's great, Dave. Wow. Four points. How did that happen? That was pretty good. Wait, I just blacked oh, out. What just happened? A ten point bonus if you could tell me what color Vermithor was. Green. Eh. Red. Eh. Black. Eh. Blue. Eh. Yellow. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Gold. No. <laughs> He was tan and bronze, arguably the two worst <laughs> colors of a dragon. What, what shitty colors? It's like, I think it's like the colors of my sandals that I just ordered. Like, yeah, fuck. good good on sandals, bad on dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but Tan and bronze, good on sandals, bad on dragons. So That's, that's, <laughs> that's the best tagline I've ever heard. I mean... <laughs> Poor Vermithor. He's like, I'm, I'm crying all the way to my flame coated grave. I don't know. It's, Poor yeah. guy. Vermithor. Poor Aww. guy. Mm. Okay. So, so they all had dragons. Yep. This is a big the, part. This is the age of dragons. Yeah. It's about, let's say, at this time in our Wayback Machine, we yeah. went to about 60 years yeah. after Aegon's conquest. So right. he rules for 27 years, I think, and dies. And then his two shitty kids take over, and that's a mess. And then Jaehaerys the first, known as the Conciliator, takes over, and he rules for 60, 70 years. Like, he is king forever. And it this is the golden age of the kingdom. Who is his hand? That helps him. It's like, it's the trifecta. The dragon has three heads. We've got good Queen Alisan. We have Jaehaerys the Conciliator. And we have the Hand of the King, whose name is what? And this begins our quick stump stage. This is the quick fire round? Yep. Yep. Um, who is Jaehaerys' hand? It's yep. going to be... A little guy who wrote a book. Can you let me finish? I'm, I'm going for this one. All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we have to keep our voices Stepped in Barth. Yes! Really? It is! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! This well, okay, well this, is, well, this is my first question. Was was Barth a yeah. maester, B, a grandmaester, C, an archmaester, or D, a septon? Well, I said Septon Barth, so I'm going to go with Septon Barth. <laughs> he is a Septon, and I think that's uh, amazing and also surprising because he was also a genius. This guy knew everything. Well, right? I mean, that's unsurprising. We've already drawn parallels to our life. I mean, uh, the guy who came up with genetics, Men, Mendel, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, uh, Mendel. Men- Mendel, Mendel for Mendelian genetics. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, he was a monk. Yeah, and, and so that's who we think. he came up with peas and genetics and all that stuff. So. All men must fucking drink, man. All men man. must fucking drink. Yeah. Am I so this is our Mendel. Stuff, you right are. You just shattered it. Yo, I, we're going to have to rename mm. this to Dave is right. Dave of Owns. Dave of Owns. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the beard. Ugh. It makes me wiser. It, does, it gives yeah. me knowledge. Yeah, I like that. I was at a whiskey bar this weekend, so Ooh. it's pride over, not on uh, the Quill and Tankard, but over where we are in Florida. And I went to a whiskey bar down in Lake Worth, and it was amazing. And the guy that runes their, um, like bar area yeah, their bar okay. manager has a manicured amazing like super hipster he'd probably get mad if i said that about him but like <laughs> his beard was a beard commercial beard like Ooh. it was manicured this thing was just like Perfect. curled it was weirdly curled like it just it was amazing it was the yeah. most amazing beard i've ever seen in my life present company not no no it's okay i understand that my beard is um it's wild wild yeah let's go with wild yeah i was gonna say they're uh unmanicured (laughs) or you know untamed yes unkempt it has a sort of uh homelessness (laughs) oh yeah yeah okay ferocious we'll go with that one so septon barth is first mentioned in the main series it's a very jumanji-esque beard yes it's actually not that wild it's just uh it's getting a little curly at the ends yeah. and it's lightened up that's the thing like it 
it was sort of a, a bristle board the last time I saw you, and now it's sort of like f not I've been fluffy, using some but like it's, beard oil to try I to like keep it, it like it's, soft and it's stuff. It's very. So. You can grow a beard, my friend, which is good because we might have to go incognito if the citadel catches wind of what we're doing. Yeah, here. we'll have to run away. Yeah. So Davos first mentions Simpson Barth when he's talking about Stannis, and it's there's Davos this, mentions him. Yeah, there's this theme of humble birth. Of people of humble birth rising up to be a hand of a king. So okay. who better to talk about Septon Barth? Then, yeah, Davos. I mean, he... do you know who Septon Barth was the son of? He, his dad did something. I'm going to give you a clue. His dad did something. He was a <laughs> what a clue. Uh... <laughs> what did Tana. his dad do? <laughs> Tana. Guess what? My dad did something. <laughs> Maybe your dad did something. Maybe your dad's had the same job. You could <laughs> take a stab in the dark here. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's see. So far, all of my uh, just random thoughts yep. have been correct. Yeah, let's see. So, Septon Barth yeah. is the son yeah. of none other than... Yeah, someone who did... Something for a job? Yeah, that person. A blacksmith? Yes. Is that no. your final answer? Yes. Yeah, you're right! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Septon Barth is the son of a humble blacksmith. I, look, I can't take credit for that one because I was definitely not thinking blacksmith. So, I'm, I'm, although I love winning, I am an honest winner. So, the thing about Barth is that... During the reign of old King Jaehaerys, Septon Barth worked inside the Red Keep, which was newly built because Magor had built it, right? Uh, and he was manning the libraries there. And he got into conversations with young King Jaehaerys, and they struck up a friendship, and he gave him excellent counsel. And in many ways, it was sort of, or we can assume in many ways, it's sort of, uh, there's a parallel between Stannis and Davos as there is between Barth and Jaehaerys, uh, the difference being that Septon Barth was, you know, a learned man. He had his letters. He knew how to write and read. Uh, he was something of a philosopher. He was something of a... He did a little bit of everything. The dude was a fucking genius. And Barth, early... Man. You know, to, what are we in? Year 300. This is about 60. So 140 years ago, Barth is walking the planet as the right hand to the king... Just being a badass, just like figuring things out. One of the first things he does is he gets sent to Dorne. Excuse me, he gets sent to Old Town where we are sitting right now. They could have sat in this very seat in the corner. Not in this seat. This and... is a special game. <laughs> that one looks very new. <laughs> But and Rosie definitely wouldn't be handing them like stale chips or anything. Oh, but. Fuck no. They could have been hammering out a piece yeah. here in the honey wine uh, that made the swords and stars, the warrior's son and the poor fellows, put down their swords and spears You're saying forever. the treaty could have happened right at this table. I right mean, here. probably it happened in the high sept or the starry sept or whatever they had. But it could have happened here. I mean, I you never know. know. I, I, I it could have happened a, here. I think it's a parallel that most... Yeah. Um, People hash things out. Yeah, in bars, yeah. Shit happens. All men must drink. All men must drink. This is where we have our... This is the important stuff. So we're probably sitting in the seats where Septon Barth and the High Septon were sitting, drinking some holy wine, figuring out the, you know, the attachment of the faith. Fuck yeah, we are. the dismantling of the swords and stars, you know. And yeah. Septon Barth promises that the Targaryen dynasty and the crown will always be the staunch defenders of the faith forevermore. You don't need the warrior sons because we're going to protect you. And here's how we're going to protect you. There are septries all over this country with super corrupt septons. But the way the rules are right now, they're not, they're not answerable to king's justice. They have divine justice. Only God can judge them, the gods, the seven. Yeah. That's not going to work. So we are going to hold everyone in the kingdom to one set of laws, the king's justice. And when septons break the law, steal money, philander, do any of the corrupt stuff Piddle that they're doing. little kids. Yeah, then we are going to bring it. We're going to bring the Sorry, king's justice down real? hard. <laughs> well, there's even some of that in this. Like, there yeah. is actually a Septon 
Who that, kills kids? Yeah, he's in the Brave Companions, I think. He's like oh. one of their septons, and he's like always wants to get scourged for his sins against, you know, for whatever. So, like, that's actually in the books as gross and gross. You know. But so, so the poor fellows and the warrior sons, right? Yeah. They disband because of Barth, right? I'm so glad that we came here in our way back machine. So, he also sends him uh, the Barth. After he hammers out that piece. So just so everyone knows, that is the treaty that basically Cersei undermines. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it was hard fought. Like it was there, Magor, his whole defining characteristic of his six years of ruling were super bloody. He put a gold dragon on the head of any warrior sons and a silver stag if you murdered a poor fellow. Like, these are farmers and normal people. Like, there was blood in the streets. Yeah. And then... Gotta King get Jaehaerys, that gold, gotta get that yeah. silver. And even, you know, but some of the, you know, the most pious small folk were not, like, going for it. And so they were, you know, protecting. And it, it just created a, a surprise. Uh, give me a number nine. Rosie, a number nine over here. Thanks, Rosie. And so it created a very divided kingdom. So Barth comes along, and they have the stars and swords demilitarized. The holy vows are sworn that bind House Targaryen to the faith as the faith's eternal protectors. The king's justice now applies to all the septons who are corrupt and lecherous and evil. And in addition to all this stuff, Barth also comes up with the idea for the king's road. For all these roads, the rose road, the king's road, the gold road... To connect the kingdoms. He says to Jaehaerys, if you're going to be the king of a kingdom that's this diverse. Now remember, they still have dragons so they can fly everywhere. But normal people can't. Yeah. He's like, you got to build a road. So they build all these great public works. And those great public works ideas came from Barth. In addition, and this is where it gets good. This is why we're talking in a quiet corner of this bar. All right. Barth also wrote books on dragons. Yeah. And he lived with dragons. We talked about what were the two dragons that belonged to the king and queen. Silverwing and uh, Vermithor. Mm hmm Yeah. He and lived with them. He lived with those. He got to observe them every day. He got to see what they eat, how they behave, how big they grow, how many eggs they lay, what they do, how they behave, how they bond with their human companions. Yeah. Well, there's a book. Um, Tyr does Tyrion mention it? About... Mm -hmm. uh, Septon ding, Barth's ding, ding, book? Ding, 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 yeah. ding, I forget what it's called. Uh, he wrote a couple, but the one that's the major one is Unnatural History. Unnatural History, And yeah. he also wrote Dragons, Worms, and Wyverns, A Consideration on the Life and Death of Dragons, something like that right. was the title. Which, by the way, in the show, the dragons are wyverns. Mm -hmm. We've been over this before. Dragons have four legs and wings, which doesn't follow conventional nature. Yeah. Name one animal that has four legs and wings. Go. None. That's right. Ding, 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 ding. None. Yeah, like bats. They have their wings are like little bats, fingers. Bats, birds. Yeah. Anything that actually flies and has wings doesn't have it's a like arms set and legs. of fourth set of legs. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. How about that, Dave? How about you that, You should Tana? write a, a book. What would you call it? I'd call it... Um, Dave's Worms and Wyverns. <laughs> I wouldn't call it Dave's Worms. <laughs> that's, 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 different that's a book, different book altogether. Different that's genre. A different, <laughs> it's the new best-selling Fifty, Sh <laughs> 50 <laughs> Shades of Grey book. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Dave. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So, so Barth is this, like, baller badass. Uh, you already answered this question about what were their dragons named? Yeah, I did. Thor and Silverwing. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Barth lived alongside these dragons, which we just said. Yep. Um, yeah, we did. Yep. And so throughout the world book in the main series, Tyrion, for example, as you just said, Dave, talks about Barth's ideas. Uh, and there are certain maesters sprinkled throughout that disagree with Barth, but in subtle ways... George has proven to us that Barth's ideas right. are correct. Okay. Yeah. Like he says, you got examples of this? He stipulates something um, that Blood Raven um, that proves. So okay. Barth had said something about the speech of ravens that in ancient days, the children of the forest used to be able to speak through the ravens, that they could actually say words. 
And the uh, argument against that was some maester saying, every raven only has the language of a child. Mm -hmm. And then Brynden Rivers, known as Blood Raven, says every single bird has a child of the forest in it. So there's like this repetition of the idea of children, child language. Barth was right. This other guy was an idiot. Bran is going to be able to talk through the ravens. ravens like they were a fucking corn, walkie-talkie. Corn. John, you have some others coming in. Arr, corn. <laughs> corn it out. Att- attack from the snow, snow. From the northwest corner. Corn. Arr, corn. But, uh, like there's a maester called Maester Vanyan, and he wrote an entire book that is an argument. It's called Against the Unnatural. Where he just tries to refute everything that Barth says. Oh, wow. Yeah, in Unnatural History, right? And so, uh, anyway, the... Ima- hold on. Just yeah. imagine this for a second. This is the thing. Imagine, r- like, writing a book, right? <laughs> and then someone coming along Dave's and writing... Dave's Worms and Wyverns. Yeah, Dave's Worms. And then someone <laughs> coming along and writes... Uh, against Dave's against worms. Against Dave's worms. Again, it's all fitting into this really gross. <laughs> like, I can imagine it. You know what? By, against along. Dave's Worms by Tana Ford. <laughs> A story of A compelling holes argument. and dirt. <laughs> and... Everything is wrong. Everything. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so the final thing that I want to say about Septon Barth, we've already established that he's baller. He's amazing. Yeah. Uh, he's only one half of the coin, but... Well, yeah, he's the heads. Who's the tail? The tail is going to be Baylor. The blessed. The bastard. He's not actually a bastard, but he's a motherfucker. In a, well, actually, he's not a motherfucker either. Uh, he's an annoying virgin. Um, Poor... I mean, most of them are, but... but here's the thing... Please, please, don't touch me. Just touch me. Just the tip. Just... Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um... So... So That's what we, happens when you're a two beer queer. Oh, uh, this is this is uh, so uh, no. So we're not done with Barth yet because Barth, this uh, this guy is very important, and Baylor the Blessed, yes. who is a douchebag in yep. my opinion, the worst. He, so no, no, he's Jaharis, a motherfucker. If Jaharis was the best Targaryen king, Baylor the Blessed is the worst. Okay. He burns books. He burns mushrooms testimony, which would have been the bodiest piece of literature on the planet. Uh, Bodiest, what? Um, like he, sorry, I guess I'm not up on the slang that the kids are uh, using these days. He writes typically when you body someone, doesn't that mean like you beat the shit out of them? It's like a like body you, jest, like a like you just beat them up. Like I think you just got bodied, joke. son. Basically, he writes Targaryen pornography uh, that he says really happened, and so he. Interesting. There are two. Um, Tales that are told, one by a septa, I think, of the dance of dragons, the blues, the greens, and the blacks. And then there's the testimony of Mushroom, who was the court jester and the dwarf, uh, at you know, in the red keep at the time. And so he just tells these really lewd um, explanations of who was fucking who and who did what to who in super graphic detail. And so, you know, there there are these two eyewitness accounts of what happened during the Dance of the Dragons when the Civil War happened. And one half is a septa and one half is mushroom. And mushrooms is like super dirty and hilarious. And so... <laughs> Sounds um, like my type of story. Exactly. <laughs> but Holy Baylor burned all those books and he also burned all of Septon Barth's books uh, the Unnatural History, and Dragons, Worms, and Wyverns. So, Baylor is the great, let's say, the grandson of Jaehaerys. And so, if Jaehaerys was the grandson of Aegon the Conqueror, now his grandson undoes all of his good works. So, do you think that some copies of these books are in the locked up in the Citadel? I want you to listen to this clip I have. Okay. I think that there are a couple of places in the world where these books still exist. I think that we know that Tyrion himself has read a fragmentary copy yeah. um, of one of Barth's books. But when Aemon Targaryen is laying on his deathbed, he asks Sam to read to him from Barth's, from something. He doesn't say what it was, but like from Barth. He wanted him to read something. 
which tells me that Amon Targaryen has a copy somewhere. And we know that Sam brought a bunch of books, right, to, yeah. with him on the Cinnamon Wind all the way to Old Town. So, but wouldn't you think Sam would have read them? I mean, knowing Sam. Oh, did I? I might have um, actually. Did you not clip this? Tana, Tana, Tana. Let me try this. We're gonna try this. Trips were sighted Is this it? By the crow's this might not be it. Two were well astern, however, and the cinnamon wind oh. soon are distanced them. Sorry, that's just the cinnamon wind being baller. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, with a name like that, come yeah. on. Uh, so the uh, I, Sam's Dragon Books. Here we go. Okay, right. so this one is a minute long, and the uh, two. So Sam is carrying books up to John. He's asked for a bunch of books. No, Aemon Targar Targaryen. Okay, we'll just listen to the clip and I'll talk after. Roll the he had clip. to get down on his knees to gather up the books he dropped. I should not have brought so many, he told himself as he brushed the dirt of Colloquo Voltaire's Jade Compendium, a thick volume of tales and legends from the East that Maester Aemon had commanded him to find. The book appeared on damage, Maester Tomax's Dragonkin being a history of House Trigarian from exile to apotheosis with a consideration of the life and death of dragons had not been so fortunate. It had come open as it fell, and a few pages had gotten muddy, including one with a rather nice picture of Balerion the Black Dread, done in colored inks. Sam cursed himself for a clumsy oaf as he smoothed the pages down and brushed them off. Chilio's presence always flustered him and gave rise to, um, well, risings. Well, Ooh, risings. risings. Mm. I think I think that, that sounds like Sam has a worm of his own. <laughs> I think mm. he's been reading Dave's worms and wyverns. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that George has hidden a a very important book uh, right in in back of Sam's erection. Like yeah. I think <laughs> but, I think his rising steals the show there, but, right? Yeah, I think it's a very interesting. Uh, it's interesting that he got aroused from a picture of Valeria and the Black Dread. <laughs> He's actually but... thinking about Jilly and yeah, every time he uh -huh. thinks about her. Uh -huh. Yeah, he goes from yeah. six to midnight. So, <laughs> so uh, that's that's the sound a boner makes, by the way, those... for those of you wondering. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> the two books. So I've been on this hunt, this mad hunt for books, right? Because Whoop! <laughs> so, sorry, I had to do it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dave's worms. We got to. Dave's worms. Yeah. <laughs> There's fucking, bo this fucking boners all over the place. What's going on? It's a, a, it's a boner over here, a boner over there. <laughs> so, so Sam, so Sam, Sam. So Sam has Maester Tomax's dragonkin. Yeah. With him. And he brings that with him to, uh, to Old Town. So do you think we're going to see that book again? It's Probably. got a history of House Targaryen from yeah. exile to apotheosis. Yeah, right? I would say I would say we're going to see it. And yeah. I think that there, with so, the consideration of the life and death of dragons, oh my God, no one else has that book, right? Like this is a book. This yeah, is a this very is, important book about dragons. That's true. And Sam's the, got the it. The question then becomes, how did it end up at Castle Black? So right, we think Master. Ding ding ding. So I can't con corroborate this, but in my research, yeah. What I do know is, uh, so I think Septon Barth brought it to the Night's Watch. I think that he brought okay. it with him. Um, he joined the Night's Watch? No, but Queen Alisanne, good Queen Alisanne, mm -hmm. uh, and King Jaehaerys flew on Dragonback to yeah. the Night's Watch 140 years ago and forced Lord Stark against his will to give the Night's Watch the new gift, right? right? The new land. Correct. And she also gave the Night's Watch a bunch of jewels, and they renamed one of their castles, Snowgate, into Queen's Crown. And they went up there to close the ruinously costly Night Fort and open Castle Black. And so the pomp and circumstance they brought, according to people that are not me, like I, 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 I couldn't find this in the text, but according to the wiki, they, they have like they brought a big retinue with them the hand of the king probably was there so you think that maybe and this is maybe uh 
a crackpot or something. Mm-hmm. But I, this is I'm the sh- the realm we're in now. My my assumption then would be that Barth kind of knew that his books were maybe under attack and decided no, to stash because some. Because it's not until Baylor isn't born until like his douchey grandchildren. Okay, so you think come along until after? So I mean, Barth doesn't sound like the kind of guy that's just like. Every library should have my books in it, you know? Yeah. So yep. you think it was just kind of just like, a, here's a gift. I gift you cop first editions yeah. of my book or whatever like that. Well, I think that, so uh, my suspicion is uh, Sam is reading the annals of the Night's Watch and the the language doesn't really, uh, written language doesn't come over to the main Westeros until the Andals. So it's thousands of years between when the Age of Heroes is, which we think the Donish. Yeah, right. And then the first men only had runes, so they carved runes onto rocks. And so there was no, like, language for us to follow. Um, and so we have this thousand-year gap. But I'm thinking if anybody was keeping... If anybody of learning existed and were keeping records, they could exist in the Night Fort, right? Which okay. is where the great warriors from the Dawn Age ended the long night and right. so maybe they wrote some shit down and it's there maybe it's just lost in these huge annals sam said in that clip you know there well there there are books that i haven't read there it could be oh i don't think i played that one but i think i played it the last time but there are things that like either we know it or it didn't happen or i just haven't found that scroll yet and so you get this idea that they're the vaults and the knowledge that's kept at castle black is huge Coupled with the fact that Aemon Targaryen, on his deathbed, on the Cinnamon Wind, asks Sam to read to him. I think I might have that audio clip. If I do, it'll be perfect. But, you know, Rosie, we're just like, we're just at the Quill and Tankard, so nothing is really like you know, thought out really. You don't have right? your computer is what you're saying. Because we went back to our way, we went in our way back machine right. to the Quill and Tankard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, uh, here it is. This is... I hope this is it. Okay, so uh, we're on the Cinnamon Wind. We're on the Cinnamon Wind. And Aemon Targaryen. Set the stage. Or maybe we're in Bravos, and we've just... But, okay, we're just going to play the clip. Here it comes. <laughs> Don't set the stage. Just play. Could be Aemon. Those talk of dragons had almost seemed to restore the old man to himself. That night he ate every bite Sam put before him. No one ever looked for a girl, he said. It was a prince that was promised, not a princess. Rhaegar, I thought the smoke was from the fire that devoured Summerhall on the day of his birth. The salt from the tears shed for those who died. He shared my belief when he was young, but later he became persuaded that it was his own son who fulfilled the prophecy, for a comet had been seen above King's Landing on the night Aegon was conceived, and Rhaegar was certain the bleeding star had to be a comet. (laughs) What fools we were! (laughs) We thought ourselves so wise. The error crept in from the translation. Dragons are neither male nor female. Bath saw the truth of that. But now one and now the other (laughs) is changeable as flame. The language misled us all for a thousand years. Daenerys is the one, born amidst salt and smoke. The dragons prove it. Just talking of her seemed to make him stronger. I must go to her. I must. Would that I was even ten years younger. The old man had been so determined that he had even walked up the plank onto the cinnamon wind on his own two legs. Oh, so sweet. Poor guy. Maester Heyman, man. Ugh, I think he makes. Tools. I think he makes that great statement about how dragons are neither male nor female, Barth and saw Barth the saw the of truth of it. Yeah. And there are people that you know, and the the we've said that refute everything that Barth says, but like Barth is right about this. Stuff. I think whenever Barth says something in the stories, we can rely on Barth. Barth knows what's up, and so not male or female, but both. So. So if we things. could see his point of view, he would be our. Reliable narrator. Ding, 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 ding. All men must drink. All men must drink. So, with Amen, so it, 
from that clip, we know, or we can surmise, that Mace Raymon was in contact with Rhaegar Targaryen. Yep. That they wrote each other letters and talked about this specific prophecy, right? The yes. The prince that was promised um, from, let's see, there's a, the, it's the Azor Ahai thing, you know, under Jade salt. Compendium. Yeah, under the salt and smoke of the whatever. Yeah. Um, a prince was promised. Yeah. Uh, the Jade Compendium, speaking of. So Sam had a volume of Coloco Votar's Jade Compendium, right? And it was written by a Volantine adventurer. Okay, Volantis, the Volantine yep. adventurer uh, who went to the Far East and told tales. Uh, basically, this is the source of information we have about the prophecy around Azor Ahai being reborn. Mace Raymond had a copy. He gave it to Sam, and he told Sam to give it to John. Well, later in the book, I was like, what happened to it? I thought, you know, and I think I said last podcast that he brought the Jade Compendium with him to Old Town. Not true. He leaves it for John with a page marked. The last thing that Amon Targaryen says to John is, did you get my book? And John's like, yeah, I'll read it. And, you know, thinking a 17-year-old boy commander isn't going to read a fucking book. Well, he does, and he puts two and two together. The sword is wrong. He understands that Lightbringer, as described in Coloco Votar's Jade Compendium... Is not Stannis' sword. And that Melisandre must know that it's wrong. I might have a clip about it. Let me, uh, let me look. We are clip heavy tonight. Yeah, that's the thing, man. We should just be able to, like, do everything. I don't know for sure that I have it. So. Oh, I already put the headphones on. <laughs> that means I've you got, got it. I've got glass candles. Right. I've got the swan ship. I've got... Clip heavy. Oh, uh, do we think... Heavy with the clips. Not like Dragon sport books. clips. We're just talking about okay, book well, clips. Okay, well, I don't yeah. think that I have that, ooh, but... Ooh. Do we Clippy think that clips. Sam's horn is a dragon binder? We ooh, can play that ooh. clip. Okay, Clippy here we go. clips. Clippy clip coming up. You ready? Yeah, go for it. I don't know what's on it. Play it. Put it. Put it in the machine. Okay, hold By on. the time the right. dealing was done, hold on. Sam was down oh God! Boots and black. God! Go God! We do everything in one take. Oh God! Accepted it. By the time the dealing was done, Sam was down to his boots and blacks and small clothes, and the broken horn Jon Snow had found on the fist of first men. I had no choice, he told himself. We could not stay in Brahmas, and short of theft or beggary, there was no other way to pay for passage. He would have counted it cheap at thrice the price, if only they had gotten Maester Amon safe to Old Town. So Sam has that horn. George is reminding us that Sam has that broken little horn from the Fist of the First Men. And I mean, we already know that the Fist of the First Men buried important things, right? Yeah. Obsidian. Obsidian. This is not. Daggers, this Obsidian, is not. Uh, uh, arrowheads. arrowheads. Yep. They wouldn't just bury some random rusty horn. And it There's no like reason. Like a new grave, right? Did Cold yeah. Hands bury it? Did Benjen Stark bury it? We don't know. Yeah. But there's like that dream. Though, uh, and this brings up a whole bunch of questions I have. Right. One, it, let's assume for a second that the Maesters uh, of the Citadel. Don't want these books alive. They don't. Right. Why the fuck would they keep a copy in their mm -hmm. hidden vault? Right? What why? Doesn't make any sense to me. Only only they can know. They have that secret knowledge, right? Like right. not everyone be, becomes an archmaester. Only archmaesters they think they can control. It's pure hubris. Right. Right? Like you think you can control it's, it. So you think it's like a it's like a it's a we power have to know stroke, everything. right? They're like, we know everything, but you don't. So yes. ha 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 ha. And we control the source of knowledge. We control so Baylor the Blessed seems... burns all these books. We can't I can't <laughs> prove that he did it because uh, the faith told him to, but yeah. the faith was up his mind. Like he seems, was mental. Seems and completely so, like uh, something an evil villain would do, and would end up biting them in the ass. So that's that's one, okay. right? Yep. Two. Yep. Is. Um, yep. So we have. It, okay. Two. If Benjen Stark buried the horn, or yeah. Cold Hands buried the horn, or even the the first men buried the horn, yep. right? The horn and it is was wrapped in a black cloak. The the horn is supposed to be able to bring down the wall. What the fuck, man? Why would the defenders of the wall ever but want this? But it's got a crack this? in it. It okay. says it's got a crack yeah, in it. Okay. And they, it doesn't necessarily mean it's broken. Right. Right. I don't I know. I mean, man. we're saying it's a broken horn, but you know, cracked things work all the time. I'm yep. gonna have a butt. <laughs> 
<laughs> my socks have a hole in them. Exactly. I have to so I can Exa- get my foot in. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the parallel. So I'm this is, just, but but this this so this horn seems like an accident waiting to happen. We don't know what's up with this horn. No. But we know Sam has it. Do you think it'll play? And he's horny. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he's been. Oh, which brings me to a tangent. Oh. Did, Wait, did, I forgot is... what the sound of a boner makes. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Okay. <laughs> did is Sam? Did Sam get Gilly pregnant on the cinnamon wind when they were yes. boning? Because he's gonna yeah. take this baby, cross his baby, no, Man's Raiders baby, yeah, to Horn Hill and be like, oh, this is this my is bastard my baby. son. Yeah, I totally knocked her up. What if he really did knock her up, and then he has a like Sam baby that looks nothing like the other baby, and also he could have a baby, but then he's an oath breaker because like you he, broke I mean, your vows. Technically, he's already an oath breaker. But he could have right? said, Cause... he could have said, oh, I got this baby on Jilly before I took my vows. I didn't break a vow yet. That's bullshit. He didn't even meet Gilly until. But I'm saying, Craster's just... keep. This is the stuff right. that like keeps my wheels spinning. Okay, right. like I'm already shit. playing right. out these multiple no. like no. futures no. and no. what if Theon also no. has a little baby? No. no, I just think everybody's got a little baby, a little no. bun in the oven. No. Rob Stark definitely has a baby. Sansa's coming. fucking pregnant. Yeah, and you're fucking no. uh, what's her name? Sansa what's his is name? not. Sansa's still Sansa's, made. Sansa, she is at least for a little while. Reek, yep. not no, Reek. No, uh, Reek. Little thing. No, not no. I don't know. Ramsey's Ramsey's Bolton. Oh no, you're thinking Sansa from the show. Sansa's off in the Veil vale of Oh, Aaron. that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. I was thinking Sansa from the show. You're Jane right. Jane Poole or whatever. Jane Poole's got a bun in the, the oven. Yep. Yeah. She's got a she's, she's got a bastard. Oh man. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a good thing that those characters aren't where they are in the books, where they are in the show. They may end up there because the show <laughs> has surpassed the books. I know. Oh, which speaking of, uh yes. can we talk prophecy? So we're gonna yeah. take a hard Sharp Let's, turn here, Dave. We got. We're at an hour and a minute, so we're good on time. We're gonna go crazy let's here. Go, let's going, go. Let's go crazy. Going off the rails on a crazy train. Talking about prophecy with Daenerys, the mother of dragons. Yeah. Bum 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 First of all, I have to play this little guy for you. Are we in? Can I play my clip? Play. Play it away. I okay. knew about the glass candles. Here we go. Though he'd never seen one burn. They were the worst kept secret of the Citadel. It was said that they had been brought to Old Town from Valeria a thousand years before the Doom. He had heard there were four. One was green and three were black. And all were tall and twisted. Okay, so that's that, and then now we had I had also played that for you guys last week. Yeah, we building, knew about that. Building on that, oh, why are building. there why are there why what is there building? one green and three black? Why is that a thing? I don't know. Does the green one do something different? We uh, also don't know clearly. what we also don't know what color the one in Marwin's uh, little. That's true. That he just says glass was. candle. Yeah, we don't know. Is it green? Is it black? Is it black? We don't know. Is it green? Is it and black? Now is it green? We're going to talk about a little mysterious creature known as Quaith and floated. A soft rustle made her open them again. She sat up with a soft splash. Miss Sandy, she called. Here he, Gee Lay asleep, came the answer. A woman stood under the persimmon tree, clad in a hooded robe that brushed the grass. Beneath the hood, her face seemed hard and shiny. She is wearing a mask, Danny knew. A, a wooden mask, finished in dark red lacquer. Quaith? Am I dreaming? She pinched her ear and winced at the pain. I dreamt of you on Balerian, when first we came to Astapor. You did not dream, then or now. What are you doing here? How, how do you get past my guards? I came another way. Your guards never saw me. If I call out, they will kill you. They will swear to you that I am not here. Are you here? No. Hear me, Daenerys Targaryen. The glass candles are burning. Soon comes the pale mare, and after her, the others, Kraken and Dark Flame, Lion and Griffin, the Sun Sun and the Mummer's Dragon. Trust none of them. 
Remember the undying. Beware the perfume seneschal. Rest not. Why should I fear him? Danny rose from the pool. Water trickled down her legs, and goose flesh covered her arms in the cool night air. If you have some warning for me, speak plainly. What do you want of me, Quaith? Moonlight shone in the woman's eyes. To show you the way. I remember the way I go north to go south, east to go west, back to go forward. And to touch the light, I have to pass beneath the shadow. She squeezed the water from her silvery hair. I'm half sick of riddling. In Carth, I was a beggar. But here I am a queen. I command you. Daenerys, remember the undying. Remember who you are. The blood of the dragon. But my dragons are roaring in the darkness. I remember the undying. Child of three, they called me. Three months, they promised me. Three fires and three treasons. One for blood and one for gold and one for... Your grace. Miss Sandy stood in the door of the queen's bedchamber. Three mounts and three fires and three treasons, shall you know. I had forgotten that stuff. I mean, you know, so this is in dance, late in dance. And we get another nightly visit from Quaith. And she immediately tells us that the glass candles are lit. Well, they're does, burning. They're burning. Does, and soon will come a pale mare, pale mare. Yeah, the pale mare, which we know happens, right? Like yep. she can see the... So is it sort of like there's a, at the end of dance, I think it's at the end of dance, Bran kind of sees everything in the world. Like he goes into the Weirwood Vision and he can just like see everything. Do the glass candles work like that? Can Quaith see these visions. So she speaks, uh, she says, beware the kraken and the black flame, the sun's sun, the griffin and the lion, and the perfumed seneschal. Like, she's sort of speaking in this code, but, you know, I mean, even a cursory glance, we know who these people are. The mummer's dragon is fake Aegon. The griffin is big griff, right? The lion is going to be Tyrion, right? The sun's sun is Quentin Martell, the sun and spear, the son of the son of Dorne, you know, yeah. they have the sun and spear. Uh, Black Flame is is Morocco. What's his name? More, more, more. No, yeah. he's the one that's with Victorian. Anyway, like all of this stuff is in dance, sort of early in dance. And Danny is being reminded of all this prophecy stuff. Three mounts you shall ride. One of them is going to be her silver horse. One of them, Drogo. Yeah. What else is, what's her third mount? Well, it's going to be... Called Drogo? No, yeah, it's going to It's going to be uh, Drogon. No, that's Drogon. That's what I meant. Oh. Yeah. Drogon. I thought you meant Cal Drogo her silver, was number two. Her silver horse. Her silver horse, Cal Drogo. She rides mm -hmm. Cal Drogo. And now yep. uh, Drogon. But what if there's another in the future? There could be one in the future. It does say three fires, will you know? We gotta think Caldrogo's pyre because that's okay. what hatched the dragons. Caldrogo's pyre, and now I'm gonna pull from the show when she burns at Vastoth Rock. Yep, that's fire number two. Bingo bongo, dingo dongo. So yeah. that's gonna be a second big pyre, and then yeah. what? Is she gonna be around for some wildfire destroying? Yeah, maybe maybe she burns the, the shit keep out or of something. Red keep something at the wall, maybe yeah. fighting you, whites. Here's a question: Do you think? So let's say that Danny gets back to Marine. Okay, there's a battle, Barrison, Selmy, Tyrion. Does she burn Marine to the ground? Like, does she just leave? I think she comes back to Marine. Yeah. And uh, the Masters have regained control after she leaves. Yeah, you think? Yeah. And I think she's so infuriated that yeah, yeah I think she raises it to the ground. Could be the third. Gone. Well, I don't think that I don't know if that's the third fire. I think that would be done out of like, like rage. Gotta, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we gotta have. There's gotta be like some big future fire. Maybe like yeah. others. I think it's like an others. Like others barbecue. She'll yeah, invite all the others exact. over to a barbecue. Yeah. Bam! Killing the. You know what? <laughs> Lesbian meat master. You always bring it back to the barbecue. The last thing. Point. The like big thing. All right. The like, shattering one. It's gonna make in, my mind poof. In the, the in the the vaults of the citadel where the hidden knowledge is. Yeah. There are two books. No. Only two? No. So that Tyrion knows about. 
One is a blood-soaked tome called Blood of the Dragon, something like that. Uh, and no copies exist, and it's an ancient Valyrian scroll, and it is, like, fabled, but you can't read it. But he knows it exists. And the others are, like, uh, Barth's Unnatural Histories, and then Marwyn, the mage, wrote a book called The Book of Lost Books. Marwyn is looking for lost knowledge, but he's an archmaster. He should have access to their secret vault. Unless they voted him out of the club, you know? Also true. Maybe you need like two or three keys to unlock, you know, certain things. I don't know. Who knows? Or maybe he, maybe the books about the lost books are legit. Maybe he really... He says he found three pages from Daenerys the Dreamer, Targaryen. The reason that the Targaryens came... Uh, to Dragonstone and left the Freehold was that Daenerys, a 12-year-old girl, dreamed that the doom was going to happen. And so the family sells everything it owns and moves to uh, Dragonstone. Parallel to a Daenerys that we know who's like 12 <laughs> years old and has really weird dreams. Who da, could da, be da, the da, princess da, that's, da, 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 that's da, 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 The princess that was promised. Yeah. So, I mean... I mean... Okay. Yeah. Let's assume... Marwyn does have a access to this sacred. Yeah. Maybe it's just so big and it's just there's so many books there's hidden so and much locked hidden up. Knowledge. And and especially maybe it's true, yeah. maybe they only have fragments of some of these books yeah. because, you know, let's say Baylor was trying yeah. to burn them all and maybe the Maester saved a couple. Maybe yeah. they well, oh shit, we you know, We'll grab that book or something like or they that. They don't know what the knowledge is because Yandel, yeah. the guy, the maester that wrote the world book, you know, because it's told from a, a slanted perspective. Yep, the unreliable narrator. Yeah, Yandel, unlike Barth, doesn't understand. Like he he doesn't understand the importance of certain things. You know, um, you know he published in the Conquest, Maester Gildane or somebody's uh, first hand take. Very exciting. He had just discovered it in the Citadel. Uh, and published it, and we had talked in a previous episode about how he would probably get in huge shit for having published this uh, because they didn't know that this sort of like firsthand Account close existed. to the dragons. Yeah, I was hoping to get a lot closer in this podcast to the insidious and sort of quiet planning that the maesters seem to have done to undermine House Targaryen and the dragon lords. That from time immemorial, from the Dawn Age. To now, since the Citadel has been around since the beginning time, the Age of Heroes, to now, that they have been against magic, against, and, and maybe over time, you know, you can move the needle a little bit, but basically, as Marwyn says at the end of Feast, the world the Maesters are building has no room in it for dragons or magic. Uh, and and they are they are now in the sort of like their power is ascending again, um, and the faith militant is, are are remilitarized and they also source in Old Town and so like. But but do you think that I mean the Maesters and the Faith are not necessarily on the same side, right? right? They're at odds with each other, science and religion, right? Yeah. So. Um, but they I mean, you're, originate you're, in the same place, and yeah. I feel like House Hightower. I just feel like we're so in winds. So you we're think gonna with, learn a lot more, well, obviously, which we already know. But you like, think with the with the increase of power that Hightower is yeah. striving for right now, that they have something to do with this new age Sans Dragon world. I think that the Hightowers have a history of being shitty. And huh. I think that every house, so George doesn't write any good guys and bad guys, so every house has a hero and a villain. Um, even in House Stark, they have really shitty lords, you know, before. Like, he does this. Right. But by and large, House Hightower are a bunch of grifters. And uh, I think that Which they're... is crazy, because they're like the second most powerful yeah. house in all the realm. Yep. You know, but it's... you know the the other side of the greens and blacks was a ha was a high tower. Alicent High Tower uh, was had slept. She was a she had slept with old King Jaehaerys. She was fifteen, and he's one hundred. Wow, yeah. wow! And she'd also slept with the Rogue Prince. 
Bow, chicka, wow, wow. I think he was rumored to have uh, made her not a maiden. And then she also ultimately sleeps with Jaehaerys' son or grandson, the guy that becomes the king. I think son Viserys. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Queen Rhaenyra's dad. And so she becomes the evil stepmother. So we have House Hightower being in a lot of ways like whores. they are woven oh, sorry. yes I mean, whores for sure well like, i mean and also do you see a parallel happening with grabbing. marjorie yes and well she's a tyrell though she's a tyrell yeah who do we have from house hightower now we have oh uh jory's I mean, ex-wife she, was a whore yeah she's a tyrell but that i mean that's they are the overlords who, yeah they okay they they rule old town and house hightower house hightower is a vassal I of see. But so, and like throughout the history, like there's a lot of meat here, but it's just scraps. It's like, I'm trying to put together a cohesive picture of Old Town and the Citadel and the Maesters and House Hightower on a mission. House Hightower is reputed to be dragon slayers from the Dawn Age. And there was some big battle at Battle Island. We don't know what happened. When people talk about the power of Hightower, they're talking about Tyrells. Mm -mm. Right? No? They're talking about House Hightower, which is the swarm protector of Old Town. I see. So Old Town is the seat of House Hightower. So I was wrong. They're not the second most powerful house in... But they're the oldest house. Except for maybe House Dane. Like, they're... Or Stark. Like, all of the big houses uh, can trace their lineage back to these... The, to the Donish, Lan the Clever yeah. was uh, a traveler out of the east who took Casterly Rock from the Casterlies, and Lan the Clever started House Lannister. And now from him, everybody has that golden, that almost ethereal golden hair, and those green eyes. The Starks all have that stark look where it's got, you know, gray hair, gray eyes, or whatever they're black hair, gray eyes. The Baratheons, you know, at Storm's End, the black hair, the strong, the seed is strong. The seed yeah. is and strong. And so I think you have these major houses descended from the great empire of the dawn and the people of the great empire of the dawn. Land the Clever was reputed in your world book to live 312 years. And they're like, there's no way a guy, you know, obviously it's a myth, you know, yeah. it's not true, whatever. Um, yeah, it is true. Like the, the great empire of the dawn possibly during the jade emperor right jade compendium jade emperor these people lived thousands of years and subsequent generations lived hundreds of years 900 800 700 and so for lan the clever to live 312 years for bran the builder to be just one guy and not him and a bunch of his sons makes sense bran the builder if he had a dragon would be able to build the wall and Winterfell and Storm's End and the beginnings of the High Tower, all in his life if he also had a dragon. Yeah. And then that would give us a dead dragon somewhere in the north. Possibly an ice dragon. Possibly an ice dragon. And on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are going to shut up because I think those guys yeah. over there are looking at us. Oh, yeah. Rosie's flicking sitting, the light. She's giving us the high sign here. Sitting sit, sit in the corner. I think I it's think time for us to make our escape. I think Alchemist just walked in. I, I think, is it is it our time to cider and see ya? It is time to cider and see ya. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. And make sure that you uh, yeah. check out Tana at her Twitter, yeah. at Tana Ford. Check out her Facebook page, Tana Ford Designs. That's right. I know she just finished uh, some big I deadlines. Finished, I just for... finished Silk Forever and Ever. It's over now. It's over? Yeah, her solo series has ended. And oh, man. It was uh, sort of a race to the finish. It's the finest artwork I've ever done in a book. Uh, if you guys are looking in comic book news to hang out in real life or to, um, I don't know, say hi, come to Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo, C2E2. In um, mid, late April, April 21st-ish, that weekend, whatever that is. And uh, and come see me. I will be at that show. We're doing a panel on mental health awareness uh, inside comic books. Because Cindy Moon talks to her therapist and, like, works out and sort of has this, like, awesome relationship with her doctor. And so, like, that's a, a part of the awesome stuff that I do in comics. Very, very cool. Worlds so check- colliding. 
check out Tana Ford and all that stuff. I don't do anything nearly Dave, as exciting. So you play video games on Overwatch yeah. on the internet machine. On the people can find thing. you on Twitch TV. Yeah, with your new DX. DX Racer, Racer chair. Yeah, we name drops there. Sponsor us, please. <laughs> Give us money. Tell us. We'll tell everyone else about the chairs. Uh, it's yeah. a very sweet looking chair. It's cool say. looking. It's How cool long looking. do you think the beard is gonna, um, is gonna grow? Well, I've I've uh, officially dedicated it till at least May first, which is supposedly when we go into the next stage of yeah. testing. Um, You're gonna feel weird yeah. having a naked face after this. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to decide if I after this if I want to like do a like a baby face again, like shave yeah. everything. But it's you gonna, been you should um, do stages, right? Like you should. Oh do well, like, I'm, I'm absolutely gonna take funny pictures. Yeah, you gotta uh, do like, like you know, mutton chops, yeah. neck beard. But so it, Fu Manchu. I gotta plan it out first <laughs> if I'm gonna do that. And two, uh, I haven't been without facial hair since 2013. Oh, so, so you're it's gonna be a weird looking baby it's, face. It's you're gonna go from wildling part of to me, baby thing. Part of me doesn't wanna doesn't really wanna shave. I just wanna like trim it back to like a usable yeah. face standard. But but then part of me is like, no, Dave, you really go gotta big. like like you went big I, with the beard. You gotta go big say, with the complete. See how you change. feel at the time. You know, like don't don't back yourself into a corner yet. Yeah. Stay open to all possibilities. Don't don't eliminate any possibilities yet. Okay. Also right. be open to naked face, but like <laughs> also be open. Viewers, if you want to see me naked, I mean see my <laughs> face naked at the end when for, I decide to shave my beard. Let me know. Except for just a mustache. Whatever you do, don't go just mustache. Why not? Don't shave it all and keep. Just I was thinking. I was thinking maybe just the old, like like classic the, Trebek. Don't yeah. go classic Trebek. Well, I was thinking maybe like just like mustache yep. into chops and shave like the, <laughs> I like the chin that. part. Yep. I think that would be or, good actually. Or even just like maybe just leave like hey, two there's portions. There's the train. Uh, just yep. two big like puffs. Oh, right? like neck beard. <laughs> yeah, like and neck beard. Get yeah. rid of sideburns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this, all and this gone. And face and, just and mouth. Like, and so you just have beard. like two puffy jowl beards. It would be the jowl puffs. <laughs> yeah, it would just be two <laughs> puffs. <laughs> That would be terrible, Dave. That would be absolutely terrible. Uh, we'll see. We're going to leave everyone with that image. Yeah, it, all the images of me, I uh, <laughs> have no idea what uh, I'm doing. You might have so. to. What if What if we have you shave it down to just a neck beard since our opening words are nerds, nerds and neck beards? And neck beards. Oh, man. You might just be a neck beard. I might just be a neck beard. <laughs> And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, you all have a good night. You have a good night. Send us your theories about maesters. Sorry we didn't get to, uh, you know, answer every question. Which we never do. Whatever. So, But yep. I did get a whole bunch of answers in Stomp Dave. So I'm ending it there. Stop. Goodbye. <laughs>